así. I saw him come into my studio. Um, he had a, a hat on, headphones in, eyes down, and was completely avoiding connection with any other human being. And that's my signal to be like, this person needs connection more than anything. And so I wouldn't let him get away with it. I would say, take your headphones out, look at me. Like, I'm right here with you. Practice yoga right here in the room with me. And, um, and I would, make him uncomfortable at times and say, so where are you from? And ask him questions and what's going on in your life. Cause I could see that he was at this sort of precipice in his life, that he was really suffering and struggling and that there was an opportunity for me to make a difference if I um, didn't ignore it. If I just, if I took a chance and intervened. I don't remember again the first time that I met her, but I remember going to one of her classes and uh, just her looking me in the eyes and um, really connecting with me that way. And I could see, um, I could see that she just believed in me. You know, I had never practiced yoga before and I was coming in and just going kind of full at it. This camp started going five days a week right away. And, uh, yeah, I could just feel the encouragement from her. I um, can't remember any specific things she said or anything like that, but there was an energy uh, that was definitely contagious about her and the whole studio. You know the expression, dance with the one that brought you. <laughs> Yoga is um, what transformed my life. And everything else that I do is an expression or an expansion of this, this place, this space, Shift Power Yoga. Uh, the, the work of yoga, the transformational power of yoga. So this is the, um, the origin, the, um, the genesis of what I do. It started here, and so this community, this space, this is home for me. And it's the place that continues to be the um, first access to transformation for so many individuals. So it's uh, such a sacred space for me um, and a sacred place in my, in my heart, really. Exhale, bow. Halfway lift. Chaturanga, up dog, down dog, right side warrior one. Pause in your warrior one and create your foundation. So we come into the physicalness of the world. Life is happening out here in the physical world. And when we climb down the rope from all the meaning we give things and we land in the physical, we know what the next right action is. Plant your hands on the floor, go to standing split. Lift your left leg up behind you. And you can choose to stay right here. If maybe this feels like, whoa, this is a lot for me today, then you stay right here. Downward facing dog. Take a moment and check in the sensations, the emotional state of your body, the physical state, the habitual thoughts. Bow a little deeper. Keep doing that, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, soften. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, soften. Oh, like you've been through some things in the last 90 minutes. 
And here you are, committed, steady, free. I would say Pam's uh, not afraid to tell people the truth, um, which you know is definitely not a not an easy thing to do. Um, you have to bear a lot of uh, criticism and maybe confrontation when you tell people the truth, and it makes a difference. I would say that is the the biggest uh, game changer for Pam is that she will tell the truth to people regardless of the consequences, knowing that it's the best for them. Uh, she did that to me multiple times when I did not want to hear it. It made me mad at her and or the situation or this and that. And it was the thing that made the difference in the moment, um, being told the truth and being challenged um, to maybe think a little differently or do something differently. Um, so yeah, I guess having the courage to tell the truth, you know, regardless of the consequences. How important is having connection and mentorship in your life? <laughs> it's extremely important. Um, yeah, both. I was trying to think of one more than the other, but I would say both for me. Um, connection is huge. Um, as an addict, um, I tend to isolate. I will isolate and pull away, whether that's physically removing myself from situations or just you know, being standoffish and things like that. And getting connected is what brings me, you know, back. Whether that's connecting physically my body or getting connected out with nature or getting connected with you or Pam or students at the studio. Um, and uh, as I said before, I, I need someone to tell me, you know, what's actually going on sometimes. You know, that hey, you're being selfish right now. You're being a baby right now. Um, to kind of shake me up um, or shake me out of this, whatever thought pattern I'm in, you know, creating this whole world up in my head. Um, and if I don't have someone, mentor, um, to kind of say, hey, maybe you look at that again a different way, I won't. I'll just keep going down the same path, uh, paranoia or whatever it may be at the time. So yeah, it's connecting to realize I'm not alone and um, the mentorship to just nudge me in the right way, you know? And because I still have the choice at the end of the day, I'll choose whether I go down that way or not. And a little nudge sometimes, a lot of times helps. And usually everything is prayer. Like I go in the mountains, I pick my own bear root. And if I can, there's a wild sage in the area, I'll go and pick that. And like before I started, I took the sage and I asked the Creator to bless it. I asked the Earth Mother and I asked the spirits of East, South, West. And I say this big prayer for everybody and that and let the universe know that what I'm doing is, is cleansing and helping a person to release anything old and bring in the new.
And there's different techniques. It's like in yoga, you hold certain poses that help to align the spine and the chakras to really, really open. But in your mind, there's certain things you can do that will break in and allow all of that. And then the energy just flows and expands around you. That's why I always say you have to become the master of your own mind. And the more knowledge in that, then the safer, the more you trust the universe and things really change quickly. Just trusting everything is gonna shift and more good things will come in because you wanna get rid of the old and replace it with Can you tell us, Pam, what inspired you to write the book? I have shared my story many times through speaking engagements and in, in the act of teaching yoga um, with coaching clients over the years. Many people have said to me, you really need to write a book. And uh, I never had any desire to because I don't care to be an author or be famous in any way or anything like that and I really just thought like there isn't anything special about my story like there's lots of people that have suffered worse than, than me. But it was a friend of mine uh, Jilly Richards, who said to me, Pam, like, when are you going, the world needs this book, you have to do this. What can I do to support you? And something just kind of changed in me. I thought, well, if this really amazing woman that I admire so much really thinks this should be a gift to the world, then I'll, I'll do it. I got nothing to lose by doing it. So I just started writing. My hopes for the readers of this book are and continue to be that they would transform their relationship with shame. Anything in their past that they have shame over, they could look at as uh, you know, a catalyst to the freedom that they seek, that in sharing their stories, in coming out of hiding, in um, being fully authentically who they are with all of their triumphs and all of their failures, uh, it's a bridge to freedom for them, but it's also a, a lighthouse for, for others. Writing the book actually helped me heal some parts of myself that I did not realize were still yet unhealed. As I had to get really down deep into those moments that were so intense in my life, I actually felt physically sick at times. I actually felt nauseous and very emotional and I would, I would write for a couple of weeks and then I would have to take a couple weeks off. And I just recognized that as, oh, there's still little bits that are unhealed. And so I allowed myself to be in the space of that. And then when I felt um, renewed, I would get back to the writing. So th the writing itself was cathartic, but the most cathartic part was sending the final copy to my mom before it was published. Cause there were things in there that I had not shared with my parents. And when I sent a copy to my mom the night before it was going to be published, she read the whole thing in one night and I couldn't sleep all night. And I thought my mom's gonna know that, like all of these things about me that I, I didn't want her to know. And I wonder if she's gonna think differently and if she's gonna be ashamed of me and all of this. And I woke up to an email in the morning, which is hilarious because my mom lives next door. <laughs> and it said, thank you for choosing me to be your mother. 
She said she was so proud and so grateful that I had had the courage to write that. And um, that was the moment that really healed me and set me free. So the creative process had many layers of healing and it continues for me. Uh, when I get emails and letters and phone calls and messages on social media from people saying, this book changed my life, that does something to my heart too. Becoming a yoga teacher was at first an attempt to heal me from the trauma of my marriage, later to try to be of service to others who needed a safe place to heal and grow. Yet it was also driven by a determination to mitigate the shame that I regularly wore like a cloak. I could no longer bear the thought of anyone looking at me like I was deficient, a flake, a failure. I longed to be seen as an asset instead of a liability like I hadn't made all of the choices that I'd made, like I hadn't been the cause of so much heartache for my family. The nagging anxious feeling that was a permanent resident in my gut always lessened when I was on my yoga mat. Yeah, becoming a yoga teacher required that I, um, to make the kind of impact that I had made on me by my teacher, I needed to be able to share vulnerably. I needed to show who I really was. And as I started to do that in the safe space of being a yoga teacher, I saw tears come in my students and people coming up to me and asking me afterwards, like that's happened to me or I, I, I also have experienced that and thank you for sharing, I don't feel so alone. And I realized that the formula for healing was authenticity, connection, vulnerability, and saying, hey, we're in this together. So yo teaching yoga was a way that I had a platform to, um, to not just show up and share, but to show others that showing up and sharing isn't so scary and that it has impact. The girl in the class that gave you the book, you changed your life, you said. 1,000%. Absolutely. I believe we are the creators of our own destiny and all of that. Oh, we have angels and guides along the way and so many um, things that seem serendipitous or coincidental in the moment are divinely orchestrated. Had that woman, her name was Leslie, had she not gifted me with Baron Baptiste's book, Journey Into Power, I don't know where I would be right now. I have no idea that I would, could ever be doing any of the things that I'm doing. And it was just a, a kindness of a person that I barely knew that changed everything in my life. You know, that is, that is an absolute fact. When something old dies, it makes space for something new. And yet we cling to what is so desperately. And we're so unaccustomed to inviting in uh, the breakdown that will lead to the breakthrough or the falling apart that will lead to the rebuilding of something. In my book, I spoke about it from the perspective of uh, the yogic goddess or the Hindu goddess Kali, the goddess of destruction. She has to come in and burn down the forest for new fresh growth to come. And I think that one of the greatest teachings in yoga is that we must be willing to come apart. We must be willing to be destroyed to some degree uh, if we want something new, if we want to be able to birth a new uh, future. Yes, real leadership. In order to be a, a generous, impactful leader, I believe that we have to be vulnerable. I believe that sharing all of ourselves is a necessity. 
if you look at amazing leaders like um, Simon Sinek or uh, Tony Robbins and I mean so many in the world and, and like iconic leaders like Gandhi and the, you know they're not hiding anything they're vulnerably sharing fully who they are and that's really what inspires us and I love leaders that um, inspire instead of require you know so many leaders require their followers to do a certain thing I love leaders that inspire followers through the practice of yoga, through self-inquiry, through self-study, what I'm learning is to step into the space where I can witness those prickly parts without um, allowing them to run me. I can see them and have tenderness and compassion for them, see where they're coming from, and then just let them dissolve by embracing them. While engaged in my yoga studies, I've been captivated by stories of the goddess Kali. She's known in Hindu lore as the destroyer of evil forces, a fierce being who decorates herself with a garland of skulls. She's often depicted dancing on the corpse of the slain demon she has conquered. The yogis say that to invoke Kali is to invite destruction, not necessarily the wrong kind of destruction, more like a forest fire that creates a clearing for new, fresh growth. Until we move into service, it doesn't really take root. So yes, I, I used it to sort of stave off the demons and, and, and heal myself to some degree. But when I took a step into teaching and sharing and, um, and really wanting to offer these tools in a powerful way to other people, that's when my healing became exponential. And I, I became so much more passionate about it because as I continued to share it, I healed more and I got to witness so many other people's lives truly transform. And I started to like create this incredible community of people that they just seem to never leave. <laughs> There is nothing special about my story than it came to me. The fact that there is nothing special about my story is the very reason I need to write it. After all, success leaves clues. Maybe my story will leave a trail of breadcrumbs for others to follow. Perhaps it will make a difference.
You know, I often go through the self-defeating, self-limiting thoughts and don't always see the light that I carry. But when I hear it from people or read it in your book, then I start to realize that I am sharing light. And you're one of the lighthouses to me. Our teacher, Baron Baptiste, is one of the lighthouses. My daughter, Kaya, my friend, Caitlin, my elder, Joseph, my teachers, Father Joe and Ramaswamy. You know, I've got a lot of uh, lighthouses keeping me going, you know. And do you think that everyone has the ability to be a lighthouse for someone else? Yeah, I think it's part of who we are as humans, you know, that each one has that spark of of light to 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 spark other people and to light up other people. And I see it in little kids especially, you know, before they start to doubt it.